You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I had a look last year and I think my total views of like my porn hub, um, not just like for one scene, for like my scenes on there, was something ridiculous, like 61 million or something like that. It's a lot of tissues, isn't it? <laughs> something like that. And that. That was just porn hub. Like that didn't include the others. So it was, it was a lot. But the reason I actually got into it was because I had an ex that cheated on me five times. And I thought, well, do you know what? You're going to cheat on me five times. What's the best way to get you back? I'm going to go shoot a porno. I've never done anal. I've never. I've been in the industry 11 years and I've never done an anal scene. And people go, how the hell are you still in the industry and you've never done an anal scene? Because I still have that thing of, one day I'm going to do an anal scene. But- how many pornos you made? Oh, God. I couldn't even tell you. Probably thousands thousands so that's a lot of dick (laughs) (laughs) as far as i know i'm in the only job in the world where women get paid more than men and that's a fact and that's true porn i'm not doing anything wrong i'm not doing anything illegal i'm not hurting anybody i'm not hurting anyone you know so what's what's wrong you know i'm i'm just going and doing my job Boom, we're on. And today's <laughs> guest, we've got porn star, Miss Brooklyn Blue. Brooke, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. First and foremost, thanks for coming on the show. No worries. Porn star ones always do well. They're fascinating. Mad stories, kind of crazy. Taboo. But very, <laughs> but very interesting as well. It's good for people to get an understanding. Like people, it's funny because in the comments, the porn stars always, there's always, somebody's always got something to say, but it's the most searched thing on the planet. So yeah. people do watch it. I think people maybe get a bit embarrassed where they then speak shit. They don't shit. want to admit they watch it, yeah. <laughs> some people. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think it's an English thing, you know. Well, UK thing. It's like a stigma here. Like, everyone's a bit prude. Whereas you go to America and it is in your face everywhere. No one cares. People are just out there like, yeah, I do porn for a living. Like, And then, you know, the Americans are like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, who do you shoot for? But in England, it's more like... Oh, you know, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, you go, oh, I do porn. They go, oh, right. Oh, you do porn. Oh, okay. And then that's like a dead end subject. I just think it's a bit prudish. Mm-hmm. Still, we haven't caught up with today's times kind of thing. Like people just need to get with it a bit more. <laughs> Before we get into all the nitty gritty, I always go back to the start of my guests, mm-hmm. where you grew up, how it all began. Grew up in London, as you can probably tell by the accent. Um, uh, with both my parents, who'd been married for years and years and years, still are married. Um, I went performing arts school my whole life. Um, I had a great, I had a great upbringing. I can't lie. Um, went on holidays, to Florida, everything. I had everything that I wanted. Um, and like I said, did performing arts school. So I grew up in performing arts, and that was my life. Performing arts was my life, even when. On, you know, Saturday, Sundays, when I'd finished performing art school that week, um, doing my normal weekly stuff, like Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sundays, I was rehearsing. I was rehearsing for shows I was in in the West End or whatever was upcoming. Like, it was fully just performing arts. Um, And then growing up, I performed all over West End, really. I performed in Her Majesty's Theatre in London, singing, um, all all over the place. It was was great. (laughs) That's quite surprising to hear. Yeah. Like, Losing all the porn stars, you know yourself, it comes from the daddy issues, the broken homes. Mm-hmm. That a lot of people have been abused, male and female, who have mm-hmm. in, interviewed who's in that industry. Like, it's quite surprising to say you've came from a stable household, you had a yeah. career in the performing arts. Like, why did you choose porn? How did you, did you start off as a stripper? Like, how did what was the, the steps? So, um, I've always been a bit of an exhibitionist anyway and performer. Obviously, performing art school days, I always wanted to be the centre of attention and stuff like that. You always wanted the main part, you know. Um, but the reason I actually got into porn, um, I've never kind of looked at porn and gone, oh, you know, I hate it or anything like that. I've always been like, mm, you know, the girls are hot in it, like 
it's, it's a, I've always sort of seen it more as acting anyway. Um, but the reason I actually got into it was because I had an ex that cheated on me five times. And I thought, well, do you know what? You're going to cheat on me five times. What's the best way to get you back? I'm going to go shoot a porno. And then I'm going to send you that porno and I'm going to get paid for it. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I did exactly that. Did my first scene. Um, and that was meant to be it. It was kind of like one of them things like, yeah, ha, 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 that's it. The next thing I know, um, Brazzers from America called, booked me in for shoots. And then the next thing I was in America shooting in LA. Um, and my career just took off. And here I am. I'm still here 11 years later. So <laughs> How old were you? I was 21. What did your mum and dad say? So, do you know what? Everyone always asks this. And when I first told them, they were actually okay with it. They kind of were like, do you know what? Like, you're over the age of 18. You're technically an adult. You're old enough to make your own decisions now. And we have no control over it. As long as you're safe and you're happy, we're happy. And when they could see that I wasn't going down a bad route with it, I was doing well from it and that I could potentially make a life out of it, um, they were happy for me. They still are now. Like, you know, my mum even says to me now, she can't believe how well that I've done, you know, um, and, and things like that. Like, everything that I've got now is from porn, and I wouldn't be living the life I have now or I have the house I have now or the cars I have now or anything like that had I not done porn. It has made my entire lifestyle, and I can't fault it for that basically fair play yeah <laughs> what was it like doing your first porn scene especially if you're doing it for revenge like do you think that was a good thing good op good thing to do in your mind at the time oh, i was shitting myself as you would be on a porn set i walked on and i was like oh my god like what the fuck am i doing like what am i doing like and i was because obviously you kind of like i wanted to do it but at the same time you know that oh shit, it's porn, like, oh, it's porn, Ooh, you know, once you do that, you can't go back kind of thing, like, it's, once you've done that, it's out there forever, there's no going back, and I remember just questioning that in my head, like, once I do this, that's it, like, are you sure you want to do it, are you sure you want to do it, but I was excited to do it, but it was more the whole um, stigma side of it, like, coming into my head of, like, should I do it, should I not do it, because you're sort of always told, oh, it's bad, and this, that, and the other, but then once I started and got on set, um, it just flowed. It's just natural to me. And like I said, you have scripts and, and stuff like that. So it, the acting, I loved that bit anyway. And then um, afterwards, the the guys that I was working with, I did I did a foursome scene as my first ever scene. So I went straight in at the deep end. <laughs> um, they were like, oh, you're a natural. Have you not done, are you sure you haven't done this before? And I'm like, no, I'm just very good at what I do. <laughs> what was the sex life in that like beforehand? Was it crazy or were you... Like yeah. like, especially if you're, if you're so natural at something man you must have been yeah I mean I can't lie I was very experimental um sort of in my younger years not now I'm probably really boring now compared to what I was but I mean my normal sort of sex life in those days was threesomes foursomes uh, you know I'd meet someone a night out and you know, have some fun with them. Everyone's like that when they're young. Do you know what I mean? Like I had fun with what I was doing. Um, and basically, yeah, so it wasn't like, this is when I went on set and it was like a foursome scene. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is the first ever foursome I've ever had. I'd had foursomes in my personal life, but this was different because it was on camera. But once I found that I actually really enjoyed it being on camera, um, it was it was fine. Yeah, it's like, and the strange thing is, this is what people always think about porn. They're always like, oh, my God, like, um, you know, you're having sex with someone else and this, that, and the other. But it's not like that on set. Like, it is so different to what people think. And I always say, if you generally enjoy watching porn, never, ever, ever go to a porn set because it would ruin every fantasy you've ever had of porn. Absolutely, it would ruin it. Because in real life, it's not like how you see on porn hub it's not i mean there's so many like stop starts and you know they'll be like oh stop you know you'll be in like doggy position and they'll be like oh stop we need to change the lighting stay in position though because they're, they're sorting the lighting you'll be in that position bent over and you literally stop moving for a minute and you're talking to like you know the guy you're working with and you're like oh so what are you doing after here then 
And he'll be like, oh, me and the wife are just going out for a meal. I'll be like, oh, I've just got to go Tesco, you know. Uh, and then you're just having a normal co-worker conversation. It's so weird. And then they're sort of, sort, sort of say, oh, well, back to action. And then you go back into it and it's like, you're back in action again. But it's so different to what people think. So I always say, if you enjoy it, don't go to a porn set. You'd be severely disappointed. <laughs> What's the, What was your ex saying once he cheated on you and you made that porno to get back at him? Well, I never. he never said anything. I never heard from him about it. Um, however, I think he's probably very... Um, well, I hope it I hope it upset him, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? But I mean, yeah, it's it's I, I do believe that everything happens for a reason in life. I'm a very big believer in that. I believe in fate and I believe in everything happens for a reason. And I think that the reason I had to go through someone cheating on me or whatever was to do that reaction to then do what I've done now, which has led me on to so many different things, like even to the point of meeting my husband and stuff like that. If I hadn't gone into porn, I probably wouldn't have met him. So my whole life path has evolved from that. So I do believe everything happens for a reason. So for that reason, you know, I'm, I'm glad it happened. Do you think you would have chosen porn if he didn't cheat? Um, I think I potentially would have always gone into it. Mm. I mean, it's always interested me. Like I said, I've always been a bit of an exhibitionist anyway. And I'm not one of them people that shy away from stuff like that. Like, I think potentially it would have been on the cards eventually. If I hadn't have gone into porn full time, I definitely would have been doing OnlyFans now. <laughs> As like, you know, the housewife. <laughs> what about your husband? But How did that relationship start? How does he handle stuff like that? Because as men, we're all protective. We're all jealous no matter what men say they can say oh i'm not jealous we're all jealous because we're protectors at the end of the day like how does your husband is he a porn star like he is now he wasn't when i met him so when i met him um he was just personal trainer that's what he did he didn't do porn or anything like that um and then when i met him i kind of like took him to that dark side you know i was like oh do you fancy just shooting a porno with me and actually <laughs> how that happened he was completely thrown on the spot so I, we was going to a porn shoot well he was driving me to a porn shoot because then um, we were going out after or whatever and it was meant to be two scenes that day and the guys were both booked um and basically what happened is on the way to the shoot and it was all the way in birmingham so we were driving quite a way um the director rings me and she goes oh the the guys that were meant to come in they've had to cancel or whatever's happened so basically we haven't got a stud now um she was like would your and he was my boyfriend at the time she went would your boyfriend step in and do it and I was like well I could ask you know so I sort of sat next to him and I've gone oh would you mind doing like a porn scene with me today and he's like uh okay like whatever and then I'm like and then so I said to the director, I was like, oh, you know, yeah, he'll do it, you know, this, that and the other. And then she turns around, her name was Laura, and she turns around and she goes, oh, would he mind doing two? Two scenes in a day. Now, bearing in mind, he's never done a porn scene. So all of a sudden, she is now asking him to do what is really difficult for most studs that have been doing it for years. Two scenes in a day, two cum shots in a day. And he's been put on the spot, like, can you do it? Like, can you perform? We need this scene. And he was like, okay, I'll go for it. Um, and that's kind of how it happened. But it was dead awkward, right? Because the first scene, obviously, it's all scripted and it's scenarios and stuff like that. So we got there and then we turn up. Bearing in mind, I've never done a scene like this in my life. I haven't done one since in this scenario. So it was just weird as anything. She goes, oh, it's a wedding scene, right? He's my boyfriend. I've been with him for about two months or something she's like you've got to wear a full wedding dress I'm like oh no like how awkward is this right so I'm in this wedding dress he's sitting there to do like his first ever porn scene and I turn up down like downstairs on the studio in this wedding dress like hey like you're gonna shoot a scene with me dressed as a bride and I'm like how awkward like you don't want that to happen with your boyfriend after two months like it's funny now because we're married but looking back at the time we both had that awkward kind of like oh this is a bit a bit awkward you know um but yeah it was it was good and he did it and he did a great job and then they basically wanted to book him for lots more work so but this is the thing people always go oh you know how do you how do you cope with each other shooting with other people? Do you film with other people? Or is it just you two together? Of course we film with other people. We do porn. 
And um, it's our job. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, there's sex in real life and then there's sex on set. Porn sex is completely acted out. It's completely fake. You don't really have an orgasm. People don't want to hear that, but you don't. <laughs> like, whereas sex in real life is completely different. And then you've got making love, which again is completely different on top of that. You've got three different aspects of it. You've got porn sex, which is acted out. No feelings, no emotion, no nothing. You both just act in a scene. You're actors. You, you're creating what people want to see. You're an actor. Then you've got sex in real life, which actually means something. And you have that emotional connection and stuff like that. And then you've got making love, which is on a whole different level, which is I believe can even go down to the thought of a spiritual connection, you know, like it's it's deep, it's really deep, it really means something. You can feel the the passion and the love and everything like that. It's completely different. So yeah, like sex, like, you know, when we do porn and he's shooting with other people and I'm shooting people, there's nothing there. We don't, it's work. We're doing our job. Uh, how do you separate the two of those? Like if you had done that scene, been with men and then go home, do you take the night off or do you no. still feel fucking frisky at night I mean it what? depends how late it is at night we're talking you know if I get in at two in the morning and then you know I'm knackered and I'm going to bed but most of the time actually like my husband always says for a guy um when he's done a porn scene um even though he's like you know he's done the cum shot and everything like that when he gets home he's actually horny because he feels like he hasn't actually released if that makes sense like he's mm. cum but there's not been that feeling there so he's actually horny because he needs to sort of come in real life does that make sense so it's you know a lot of times after we've worked together yeah we will have sex at home um but obviously like i said it depends on other things as well like the time of night it is <laughs> stuff like we're old now <laughs> but i can't go all night anymore <laughs> do you ever get jealous though no never never, never. like fair play what would there be to be jealous of like it's it's a job no, I'm not going to be jealous of that. Mm -hmm. Like, no way. I mean, I've directed some of his scenes and he's directed some of mine. He's filmed some of my scenes. Um, you know, I was behind the camera at one point. I was a director. We did this whole movie. Um, I literally wrote it, directed it, everything. Um, it was a full-length um, James Bond parody. That's what we did. And I directed it. Um, he had like three scenes in it and I directed them all. And I was behind the camera literally going, no, do it harder. Like, we need this position now, like, you know, do it. Like, then I was literally like that, like a proper director behind it. Like, there's no jealousy or anything. I think the thing is, the reason people think that there would be jealousy is because most people are insecure in their relationships. And I think if you've got that security and you're completely secure as a couple in your relationship, you wouldn't be jealous. But most relationships and most people are actually insecure in their relationships and that's why I think they get a little bit jealous because they have that little inkling of what if he goes off with someone else or what if she goes off with someone else if you're completely secure that wouldn't even cross your mind do you have open relationships do you are you just completely faithful like, how does it work in the porn industry yeah so me and my husband in real life we're obviously completely faithful like we would never cheat nothing like that obviously then we both do porn for our jobs but that's it but in our personal life we're not the type of couple that would do swinging or anything like that we wouldn't do anything mm -hmm. anything like that it's not it's just not something that interests me really do you think these would be still together if he didn't do it yeah of course yeah, so. yeah. how was he at the start um, no he liked it like he's always been one of the i think to be fair if even if he hadn't met me he might have gone into the industry anyway um he was kind of like sort of around the industry a little bit like through Twitter and that he used to like speak to a couple of the girls and stuff because personal trainers so we used to train some of them um so yeah I, th I think you know he he enjoys it yeah what's the hardest scene you've ever done oh god when it's just long days like the hardest scene I've ever done is where <laughs> we had to do two scenes in one day and we got on set and this is what people don't realize about the industry um, we got on set at nine in the morning for hair and makeup. Uh, we did not leave that studio till 2.30 a.m. in the morning. It was crazy. And that wasn't because we were fucking that whole time. It was messing around, 
studio, changing the scenes, changing the lighting. The acting bit had to be done about 20 times because people couldn't remember lines. Like then one of the guys had an issue and was up, down, up, down, up, down, which slows up a whole scene. Um, If you know what I mean, up, down, up, down. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> you can't really work with that very well. Um, so that days like that, I think, oh, like, you know, it's just too much, too long, <laughs> too long a day. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. But that's like the hardest. It's the long days, the days like yeah. that. But scene wise, they're all pretty easy, really. I, I'm, But then I'm one of them people I like to go in, get the job done and get home. That's it with me. It's like. Go in, get the scene done as quickly as I can, get the hell out. Like, get my job done, get my day's pay, go. Mm-hmm. I'm very like that. And um, I think if you're like that, then you'll be fine. But, I mean, obviously in my industry, there's two sides to it. There's the good side and there's a the bad side, and there is a bad side to it. I'm not going to sit here and say it's all great, it's all, you know, flowers and daisies and stuff like that. However, I'm on the good side of it. There is a bad side to it. But it's all about... When you get into the industry, knowing what you want, knowing to keep your head screwed on and and making sure you are absolutely, you know, strong minded as anything and no one, you know, sort of put you on the wrong track kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You've got to go in, you've got to know what you want, you've got to do what you want, you've got to put your foot down and you can do well out of the industry. Then there's another route you can go down, which isn't so great, but You've just got to be clever without it, basically. Have your head screwed on yeah. and you can do well. Yeah, because I've had people on who love the industry. I've had people on who absolutely hate it. Who yeah. In the industry. Like, what are the good points of the porn industry? Um, It's fun. I love what I do. It's fun. Um, I've met some amazing friends out of it. Like, my co-workers are fantastic i've known them like most of them i've known for years and years so when we shoot together we've all known each other for years it's just like being back at the office um the money can be amazing if you if you work if you do it well it can be amazing but it's about how you run it there's so many girls um that come into the industry and they'll give everything away straight away they'll go straight into you know um anal dp this that and the other all of this straight away. Now, if you do that straight away, your career's washed up, you're done. Oh, so? Because you've given them everything they want. You've given your fans everything they want. There's nothing more that you can progress to. And once you do things on that level, because your fans have seen you doing that, well, now that's the hardcore side of you. They're only going to want to see that. So this is where people mess up. You've got to, I've never done anal. I've no, I've been in the industry 11 years and I've never done an anal scene. And people go, how the hell are you still in the industry? And you've never done an anal scene. Because I still have that thing of one day I'm going to do an anal scene. For top dollar. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> but people don't know that, you know. So you're always interesting. So I still get booked for normal, you know, normal scenes, normal sex scenes. Because I don't do anal. But people still think... One day she's going to do anal. One day she's going to do DP. One day she's going to do... It's still exciting. What's DP? Uh, double penetration. Funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't think I could handle it. But, I mean... Fair this play, is... though, because I always thought porn stars was kind of a free-for-all and just willing to do whatever it takes to get money. So fair play mm-hmm. for having some yeah. standards for yourself and some yeah. boundaries. Would, how much would it be, though, would, if somebody came in with a big offer to do anal, would you do it? I've been offered a huge amount to do anal before um, from Brazzers and I turned it down. How much? Uh, for one scene, I got offered about 12 grand and I turned it down. So, yeah. Who offers the most money? Um, it depends. I mean, like, this is the thing. It depends. I mean, I'm contracted to a company now, um, but it literally depends on what the scene is and who, and, you know, um, who the company is so basically what happens is someone will call you up from a company and they'll go hi brooklyn i've got this scene it's with this guy it's this scenario do you want to do it yes or no and then you say yes or no and then they tell you the fee and then you can say yes or no to it and that's pretty much how it works so you pick and choose what you want to do um 
but it just it dep- it varies. It completely varies, to be honest. But obviously, the American companies pay the best. Would you ever go to America? I've been there to move though and give it full time. No, I couldn't live there because I. Do you know what? I'm I'm a homebody. I am a proper like I'm a proper loser in real life. <laughs> Everyone thinks, oh, she does porn. She's a porn star. She must be so much fun in real life. And don't get me wrong. I've had my party in days and I was really fun. But now you will catch me on a Friday night sitting at home with a glass of wine, watching Netflix, doing absolutely nothing, you know, chilling on the sofa with my dogs. You'll get me on a Sunday morning, um, a Sunday morning, walking the dogs down the beach. Like I am so boring. I'm like a proper married family woman (laughs) who's making dinner every night at home and people they can't put them two together and that's what's so funny and like it's people just can't put a porn star together with a wife and a mother like you can't be people think you can't be all free but actually yes you can I'm living proof of that here I am you know like yes I'm I'm Brooklyn Blue and I do my work and I do my scenes but my real life my personal life I'm a wife and a mother and I live in the countryside and I'm really, really boring and I am your typical wife and mother. You know, I, I don't walk around with my hair and makeup done all the time and, you know, I, I'm walking around hair up, no makeup on, tracksuit, like like I've just rolled out of bed. You know, that's real life. That is real life. And I have them two completely different. My job is my job and then I've got my real life and that's where as well like it's about keeping your head screwed on in this industry don't get caught up in something when you can make something out of it and have a a great life off it basically do you ever think you'll start not at the moment no i mean people always say this they go oh you're getting older and i know some women that look absolutely amazing at like 40 50 they look banging i mean you can get fillers these days and botox (laughs) which is a help right (laughs) but I mean, maybe 40, 40, something like that. Um, I will stop the day I don't like it anymore. The day I don't like it anymore or the day I don't get any work anymore because I look too old, then I will stop. How but, many pornos you made? Oh God, I couldn't even tell you. Probably thousands. Thousands. That's a, that's a lot of dick. <laughs> 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 but to be fair, a lot of them would be the same people. But it's it's a lot, a hell of a lot. Yeah. Mm. And you're still not tired of it? No, it's my job. It's like any job. It's like if you were an actor and you did Hollywood films and you'd done James Bond for, you know, I don't know, you keep appearing in the sequels of it, would you be bored of it? Still different every time. It's still a different script. Yeah. <laughs> Has it got to be... I turn on for you though, it's got to be, like you say, a feeling where you've got to enjoy it. Because there's a lot of people who have interviewed that are still doing it and it seems as if they can't get out. And the same as with boxers, they can't stop. It's a feeling. They've yeah. got a feeling. It's a yeah. buzz. Obviously, it's different, but it's kind of the same as well. There's a feeling there where they feel as if they can't stop. Because then, when it, you, you've been doing that so long, when you take that away from your life, then what you got? Obviously, you're a yeah. mother, you're a husband, you're a wife, I get it, but. That you've been doing it so long, has it just been you're so used to doing it that there's never you've not even got a cut off yet in your mind? Yeah, I mean it's a part of my life. That's the thing, and it is, and it's been such a good part of my life, and still is a good part of my life. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I have a really good, I have a really good life off it. Like, I, I do, I generally do. Like, you know, I, I've, we've done well. Like, yeah, I have my dream car. I have two of my dream cars. I have the house that I've always dreamed of. Like. Everything I ever wanted, I've got from porn. And that's what I'm saying. Like, there is a lot of people in the industry that don't do that. But it's about playing the game right and going down the good side of it and making it work rather than going down that bad route. Because there is a bad, there's good and bad in everything. In every job in the world, there's good and bad. In everything in life, there's good and bad. It's about making sure you stay focused and going down that good route. And, you know, keeping that tunnel vision of what you want, what your goals are and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a part of my life. It is. And I'll never, even when I do retire from it, if I do, I'll never not be Brooklyn Blue. Of course I won't. She's a part of me, you know. Um, I'll always have that side to me. But I don't, I just, I don't know what else I'd do that I didn't, like, 
enjoy as much if that makes sense like no. I, I i couldn't be one of the people that sit in an office all day i'd be so bored and i can't work for anyone i'm terrible at that like i just i only want to work when i want to work <laughs> yeah that's the best way is be your own boss and be independent and be your yeah. own master of your own universe and achieve what you want yeah. to achieve but how does it how do you feel as if it affects your kid as he gets older so i'm always going to be honest with him um at the moment, obviously, he doesn't know because he's too young. Um, however, when he gets to that age where he needs to know, um, I would I would tell him and I'd be honest. And I've always been about being open about things like that. I don't want, like, what many parents are like where they're very taboo about things. I don't want him to be in his teenage years and be scared to ask me anything because he's worried to talk about certain things with me. I'd rather know that he's safe and be honest and open with me. And if he has any anything he needs to tell me or anything he wants to ask me about things he doesn't understand or anything like that, I want him to be able to ask me and me be able to respond and teach him, you know, like be be a parent. Um, you know, I mean, like my mum, for example, she never even spoke about sex. Like she wouldn't talk about it. Like she does now, but she would never talk about it ever. And I feel like sometimes that's actually worse because then you could go off down a rebel side and get yourself in trouble kind of thing I'd rather have her sat down when you know I was 15 or whatever and said look this is what sex is this is what happens these are the consequences that could happen rah 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 I'd rather have that she didn't want to talk about it um so I'd rather not be that and be the person that you know my kids could come to me and ask anything and I would be honest about it and and you know hopefully guide them in that right direction but one day I will have to tell him. And I, I think, you know, it's one of them things. I mean, with OnlyFans and stuff like that now, there's so many women out there doing it. It's become way more normalised. And I think if, you know, if I just say to him what, I, what I've always planned on saying to him, he has the life he has because of what that, because of what I do. You know, if I didn't do that, he would not have the lifestyle he has. He would not be going to Lapland on holiday. He would not be living in the house he lives in. He would not have the education he has. Everything he has is because of, you know, my job and stuff. Um, and me and my husband's job, you know, he does the same job. We provide for him from our job. And I think he will appreciate that. And I think as long as it's spoken about in the right way, I don't think it will affect him badly, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think when you hide things and they find things out, and you've hidden it, and then you're still trying to hide it after they found something out, it's worse. Yeah, you seem very sensible. You seem very level-headed, which is it's good to see, because I think the porn industry is a very bad rep. Yes. That's what we'll talk about, the dark side of it. I know a lot of girls, it has been used, and they're getting buttons for basically doing all these scenes. Yeah, like, and it happens. Have you ever came across any of the bad stuff from that industry? Yeah, so obviously being in the industry, I've seen, I have seen the two sides of it. I haven't personally been a part of the bad side but from girls I've worked alongside and stuff like that I have seen things you know heard things more like not seen it but heard things um and there is that seedy side to it and, and stuff like that and that is more the amateur side and this is the thing that always annoys me and I'm very pro I'm very like pro my industry I love my industry and I want to support my industry and I want to be able to support everyone that's in my industry but I hate the fact that the most stuff you see about my industry on like the documentaries, on the TV, on interviews and everything like that is always this really bad picture of it. It's this really bad picture of the industry, this portrait of the industry. You think, you know, people hear it and they think everyone in the industry is damaged. Everyone's come from bad backgrounds. Everyone's been abused. Everyone's been this. Everyone's been that. That's the image that, you know, the media portray of the industry. And yes, that is a side to it, but that's the amateur side where, of course, in anything, if you've got a load of amateurs, amateur producers, as they call themselves, or directors, as they call themselves, approaching all these, you know, vulnerable people going, oh, let's shoot a porn scene, I'll pay you 300 quid. And they're going, oh, yeah, you know, I'll do it. I mean... Of, of course, back in the day, you know, I used to get a couple of them, even when I worked for Brazzers and that, I used to get a couple of the por amateur porn producers message you going, oh, hey, Brooklyn, would you like to do a scene with me? Like, it's at my flat. I film it myself. 300 quid. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not stupid. Are you crazy? It's you with your camera just wanting to get off, you know. But yes, some girls would do that. 
and think that's a real scene and that's that is the bad side of it so when I always say like it's about being you know tunnel vision and knowing what you want and keeping your head screwed on about things you can do well of it but you can be caught up in the bad side it's about being smart about it and just just common sense really but obviously the, the thing is they never show the good side they never they never in media show the good side of porn because people don't want to hear it they don't want to hear that someone can be in porn and you know do well from it and also be married with kids and have a normal life people don't want to hear that people want to hear everyone in porn's fucked up that's what people want to hear because that's what the media's portrayed it should be however that's not the truth of it there is a lot of girls in the industry and guys in the industry who absolutely smash it you know there's a lot of people in the industry that are married that are married with kids there's so many people that are married with kids in the industry they they never show that. It's mad. I had uh, Dan on. He says he's straight and he does gay porn. Yeah. It's, 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 it's I struggle to believe that. But again, he's a fucking world champion bare knuckle fighter as well. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with him, but such a good guy, man. And I got a lot of time for him, a lot of respect yeah. for him. But he does a gay porn. He's straight. He's got a missus. Because mm? the the gay people love that kind of thing, straight men. and Yeah. And they, but fair play, I'm listening. Because porn is acting. Yeah, I've not got any grudges or any agreements with anybody in the porn industry. Like for yeah. me, even these podcasts, my job is just to let people tell their story. And you're probably the most level-headed porn star I've had on. I've had a few Thank on. You. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the rest are all fucking nuts. But I love them all. <laughs> even my Scottish friend, Georgia Lyle, and that, like, she's doing well. She's got her kid now. She's doing her own thing. Yeah. But, but some, a lot of porn stars as well, you can see they're messed up. Yeah. You can see they're fucked, man. And, with the life they've gotten growing up you can see the struggle and the pain they've gotten mm. do you think a lot of people can use that job as well as a escape yeah i i think so and and like i said obviously there is there there is sides to the industry where there, there is people like that in there but however that's in every job that is that's all over the world isn't it you're going to get that not just in my industry if you worked in tesco's you're still going to have that you're still going to have people that have come from different backgrounds and and a, and a different you know you're, you're going to have that everywhere but i just feel like in my industry they really shine that light on just that certain person in my industry who's can represent it in a completely different way to not what it is i mean if they did i've always said they should always do a reality show with all the married couples or in porn you know, living their normal lives, like, you know, being married with kids in their family homes, like being completely normal women, people would be shocked. They would be shocked because <laughs> they'd be like, hang on a minute. How? How does that happen? How can you be doing? How can a porn star be like that? How can the porn star be? It's so bizarre to people and they just never show that and they never want to talk about that. And like, even when I, I go on the news a lot, I speak, I speak on, I don't know if you've seen, I speak on GB News a lot about the same issue. And um, they always put me on with like, you know, uh, feminists that hate me, they hate me. And, oh, you know, they, they come out of all kinds of things of how I'm, degrading myself and this that and the other it's always the same the same thing they never they never change their story it's always the same thing so I always have the same blunt response um but they, they all come out with it you know and it's like no actually do you know I'm in the only industry in the world as far as I know you might have to google this for correction but as far as I know I'm in the only job in the world where women get paid more than men and that's a fact and that's true and my wage has always been more than any bloke I'm working with on that day. Always. Um, I don't know any other job in the world where women get paid more than men. And then, you know, the feminists like to sit there and go, oh, you know, it's this, that and the other to women and, and all this. And I think, well, hang on a minute. I, in a way, consider myself <coughs> the biggest feminist out there. If you want to call a feminist a feminist... I am a feminist, the biggest one you could possibly get. Because isn't a feminist about being equal to men, about all this kind of thing, about a woman being able to make her own decisions and stuff like that? Well, if that's the case and that's what a real feminist is, then I am exactly that. Because on set, if I do a scene, I will get paid more money than that man I'm working with. I will also be completely in charge of that scene. 
I will choose the positions, I will choose the cum shot, I will choose absolutely everything. Um, is that not what a feminist is? They just love to moan and complain, if I'm honest. All mm-hmm. you hear now is about masculinity and femininity. Like, this is all you hear. Like, yeah. no, in life, nobody's got the answers what you should be. Like, for me, be who you want to be. As long as you're not harming anyone, especially kids, then be who you want to be. But don't force your agenda and your opinions onto other people. And yeah, try and get exactly. Your on your be who you want to be as long as you're not harming anyone because nobody's got it figured out. Yeah. No, who's anybody to judge? Who's a feminist to judge? All I see is the majority of them shouting and fucking moaning, like playing <laughs> victims. Like, just yeah. be, go on with life. Like, yeah. understand that equal rights. And I believe it. Like, I believe women are more powerful on this planet than men. Men create the world, but mm. women bring life to it, which is the most powerful thing. Like, women I, make a house a home, as yeah, they exactly. say. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I genuinely believe that like, as men and women, like, I believe the whole world is kind of in turmoil because nobody knows what the fuck is going on. There's yeah. so much information out there now. I think it's making people brain dead. People ain't focusing on what's really important. That's working on themselves, trying to be a better version of themselves. But it's so difficult because there's so much information out there and it's just frying people's fucking head. Yeah. Do you find that a constant battle trying to prove that who's who's anybody to tell you what you should be doing what's right and wrong do you know yeah. what i mean do you find that do you find it hard sometimes to constantly be going and try to um, not prove yourself but try to say what you're doing is right i mean it's i mean since i started in this industry which is obviously like 11 years now um i've always i've always had it i've always had the comments you know the people that want to slag you off because you do it Nowadays, I generally don't even acknowledge it. Like, I don't even, if I read it, if I read a comment, I could not care less. There'll be people on this little comment, you know, oh, look at her, her, her. you know, of course they will. I don't care. I, I don't care. <laughs> Say what you want. I don't care. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, there always is that. And that, that's the thing I always say as well. Like, I generally think that, um, my industry is one of the ones which is actually, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I always say this as tweets as well, and I can't remember what I'm thinking now. Um, uh, it's gone out my head. It's gone out my head. But it's uh, people will always sort of, you know, slag people off and say this and say that and say what they want to say and, you know, keyboard warriors and whatever. Um, and I just think, do you know what? Like, I don't care. Like, I think people that have got the time to do that they're not doing it because they generally think what they're saying. I think they're unhappy in themselves and that's why they want to project that onto other people. I think if you're generally happy in yourself, you wouldn't bother with mm. other things, with other people, to be honest. Um, and that's just the way I think it is. Um, why do you think men are so angry towards porn stars? And in the comments, it's just all angry men. And I'm thinking, shut up. Like, don't watch. Like, it's like men are... I believe it's the perverts who get more upset. It's the ones who <laughs> watch porn relentless. I believe it's the ones who've got hairy palms by all the shit that they do and they get so angry and frustrated. Like, I understand like, human emotions as well. I understand that like, um, semen sacred and semen retention and watching porn can damage the amygdala. Like, mm. That's scientifically proven. Like, but do you find a lot of people, why is it the men are so angry towards porn stars? See, I haven't, I, I know what you're saying. Like I've seen comments about things like that, but I found that most my fans and that, they all they all love what I do and they're, they're all really positive about it and stuff like that. But I know what you're saying. I've seen like on Pornhub and that when I've been scrolling through, yes, I got on Pornhub. I don't Google myself on there. That'd be weird. <laughs> but like I see comments and things like that. And I think the only people that do comment and stuff like that is I think generally because really secretly I think they'd like to be doing it themselves mm-hmm. and they can't <laughs> so they're a bit jealous maybe that they can't do it or maybe they can't satisfy their wives at home mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a fair few men that can't satisfy their wives at home that go on Pornhub and like to moan I tell you that <laughs> mm-hmm. do you see that a lot like when you're doing a scene like do you have do you watch it back to see if you've done a good job or is it just a case of once it's done you don't watch it again um, I'll watch the acting bit, but I won't watch the sex bit. That is so cringy. Like, 
honestly, I think I scrolled through it once and I was like, oh, shut up. I'm so bloody loud. Like, I literally was watching it like, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm loud. But obviously, I'm acting. I'm not like that in real life. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I mean, like, yeah, I find it really cringe. Like, cringe. You know, like when you hear your own voice back, like, you know, when you record yourself and you hear your own voice back and you used to be like, oh, my God, my voice. Like, it's horrible. It's cringy. That's what I'm like about the sex bit. But the acting bit. I'll happily sit there and watch the acting bit and the scripted bit, you know, and go, oh, that was quite good. I'm quite a good actress, actually. <laughs> What's your worst ever scene? Um, oh, worst ever would probably be, um, this is such a gross story. You're going to be like, oh, my God. But it's the realities, honestly. Um, we did this, this scene um, for St. Patrick's Day um, in Green Gunge. You know where this is going now. <laughs> And it was this wrestling. So it was me and this other girl. It was a threesome scene. Um, it was for Brazzers. And um, me and this other girl, we had to wrestle in Green Gunge. It was absolutely freezing, right? Because they put us in this studio with no heat in. It was the middle of winter. It was so bloody cold. And the gunge was obviously made with water. And that was absolutely freezing. It was horrendous. <laughs> And then we were wrestling in this gunge and then like the guy in the scene was like the referee kind of thing. You, you know, typical porn scenario. Obviously, green gunge, we're getting covered in it. This, that and the other. He ends the, the wrestling by basically saying, oh, you know, you know, let's work it out outside the ring kind of thing and work out who's won or whatever. Um, we obviously went and showered and stuff like that before the sex scene, but... Green Gunge gets everywhere. Like, it generally gets everywhere. I mean, I don't know if anyone watching this has ever had, you know, green been in Green Gunge before, but they'll know what I mean. Um, so it got everywhere in places it shouldn't be. And as we were doing the scene, oh, my God, it was so gross. All this Green Gunge was coming out everywhere. It was so disgusting. All this Green Gunge was coming out everywhere. Oh, my God. And... The, the director was like trying to film it and he's like oh we can't show this like this green gunge like coming out of places it shouldn't be it was all over Danny's dick it was all coming out everywhere and it looked like the worst case of gonorrhea gone wrong and we're all on set and we had to cut and try and wash out all this green gunge until we could kind of like get back to it actually because you can't use that obviously in a porn set um and ugh, that was probably the worst scene I ever did it was just so it was so cold as well we were so cold and just the green gunge everywhere it was so unsexy so unsexy and it was just a disaster and put it this way they never they never ever did the green gunge again they never did it again why do you think it's more accepted in america than the uk um, do you think that's just the UK in a whole that just yeah. miserable bastards <laughs> yeah basically I think everyone's just still prudish here like it's still like a subject that people don't want to talk about here like the Americans are really like I, mean, I don't know if you've been to America but they're so like out there they're so like you know they just say it how it is they're so loud and proud and they don't care like they're literally no filter you know whereas in the UK it just tends to be really like oh, you can't talk about this or you can't say that, you can't do this. And I, ju- I think we're like 10 years behind still. We need to like catch up, you know, with society now. And I do think that OnlyFans is helping with that, to be fair, because I think it's become a little bit more normalised. They're doing more programmes on it and stuff like that now. Again, not they're not showing the best side of it. Um, but I, I mean, even like, oh, it was last year, um, it was a big channel, uh, like it was Channel 5, actually, decided they were going to show a good side to the industry for once, right? This has never happened before. So we were all like, okay, this is different. Normally all documentaries and that are all showing the really shitty side of the industry. They decided they were going to do a reality show, um, same as TOWIE, right? And they had the TOWIE producers come on to do it. And they were doing this big show. Um, they casted it. I was one of the cast and there was five other girls in it. It was me, Gemma Massey, um, Stacey Lacey, um, there's a few other girls, all really big names. Again, all women that were either married um, or in long-term relationships, all with kids and had like normal family lives. And they were going to do this big reality show 
um, filmed the same as Tauwe, where it was in between sort of selling sunset and um, sort of like Tauwe and the housewives, real housewives of Cheshire kind of thing. And they were going to film a reality show based on our real lives, like not actually showing us doing porn, but sort of showing us going off to work and little, you know, safe for work sort of bits, but actually showing us in our normal lives. Like, obviously, they were going to throw in some drama and, like, some arguing at dinner parties. They, they'd planned all these dinner parties and that, and they were like, oh, we need some drama at it, and there were going to be, like, little arguments and stuff like that. You know, like they do with these reality shows. They call it, um, what do they call it? I don't know. It's like scripted reality, isn't it? So they were throwing in all this. But what they were actually trying to do is show us all with, like, our husbands and family women and, and this normal, very, very normal life with like drama in it. So it was juicy to watch. But yet we were all porn stars for a living. It, we got to two days before filming. Um, literally everything was sorted. It was like months and months down the line. They took us all down to London and everything like that. Two days before filming, they pulled the plug on it. Why? Because they said that society wouldn't like seeing the industry in that light. And basically, it was too soon um, nowadays to show a, that side, basically. And then they basically just decided to, in the end, scrap the whole thing. And six months later, they did a documentary showing all the bad side of it again. Yeah. Oh, we were all fuming. We were really angry because then literally they just cancelled it on the fact of they they didn't really say much. They just sort of said it's too soon. It's too soon to well, too soon. to portray that that good image. Well, it's just portraying people's lives, yeah. good and bad. Like you say, any industry is full of evil and full of good. Yeah. But it's too many judgmental people on this planet and that's why it's sinking instead of just embracing people for who they are like mm -hmm. I've said as long as you're not hurting anybody even hurting yourself or especially hurting kids then be who you want to be do you know what I mean anybody can be who they want to be who's anybody to judge that like, yeah we all see this world differently we've all been raised with different methods and different ways of thinking and I don't know what's right and wrong anymore I know what's as long as I'm not hurting myself or hurting my kids or hurting anybody else around me as long as I can be a better person than I was yesterday and life is all right but who the fuck are we just constantly judging mm -hmm. constantly putting people down like that's why these podcasts are decent as well so people can get an understanding people can always make their own assumptions and a majority of people are struggling in life now so people are going to be angry people mm -hmm. just fucking like to hate on people happy yeah but the how do you how are you treated on the streets? Normal. But, I mean, people know what you do, though. Yeah, some people know what I do. Um, like, I, I mean, I, I've never really had anyone say anything to me. Um, you know, but people know what I do, and some people like to, you know, have an opinion about it. But like I said, I, I don't care. I don't care what people think. Um, like this is the thing, and and it goes the same with like what you're saying. I mean porn i'm not doing anything wrong i'm not doing anything illegal i'm not hurting anybody i'm not hurting anyone you know so what's what's wrong you know i'm i'm just going and doing my job it's safe there's no harm to anybody no nothing like that so what you know what's the problem i don't get it um but i've never had anyone sort of say things to me um mainly sort of people that want to say anything they do it all over the internet now don't they I don't yeah. want to actually say it to you. <laughs> How do you handle that? Um, so actually, the thing is, I don't actually hardly see it anymore. When you get to a certain amount of following on Twitter, it actually filters it all out. <laughs> so people can comment as much hate to me as they want. I probably won't see it. <laughs> mm. It sort of filters it all out to about five or six mentions of sort of what it randomly decides to show you um so if people want to send me a load of stuff load of abuse which they probably do i don't actually see it so kind of wasting their time mm -hmm. what, <laughs> so what's all the the, the 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 kind of usual suspects for the uk brazers like the fake taxi mm. have you done all that yeah done what all was that. fake taxi like um, so that's obviously filmed more like you just kind of get on with it. Whereas like all the other sets, like the big companies, it's very like stop, start, there's scripts, there's this, that and the other. Fake taxi is really quick. You're literally filming how it how it is. I mean, like you're in a taxi, there's all cameras set up and they kind of just let you get on with it. They kind of just say, right, get on with it. Basically, go in the taxi and 
do the scene and that's pretty much it and you are literally just left to do it and it's in the middle of a field they do it they used to do it in a car park and then they got banned by the council um <laughs> but literally um yeah that they sort of that's the one where it is a bit more real because they kind of just let you crack on basically it's a nice quick scene that how much do you get paid for that one uh well it varies i mean obviously like it's only a quick one that one so that one you might be looking at i don't know like 600 700 you'd be there for about an hour the cash in hand no they don't do that anymore that hasn't existed for years like it's all bank transfer now and you wait two to three days <laughs> so straight tax and more not amateurish but you know what it means kind of in and out it's not as scripted who yeah. owns fake taxi? In fact, I think the, the boy actually messaged me to get his dad on the podcast way back last year. <clears throat> so I did. Yeah, so it was a guy from my area who actually first thought of the idea of fake taxi. And then I think it eventually got brought by somebody else. But I first shot the scene for it before it was even out. So we were sitting, like in we were sitting in his like in his flat, about to like go down and shoot this scene. And he was telling me about it. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, it was complete. It was something back then. It was something completely new. Like, most of our scenes up until that point were always shot in studios and shot professionally. This was like the first time that they were sort of bringing sort of amateur, um, like sort of uh, am amateur angles and cameras to a proper shot porno, if that makes sense. So we were sitting there, we were talking about it, and we were going, well, I remember us saying it will either do really well because people will think it's real. They'll think it's a real taxi driver or it will fail miserably because everyone will know it's fake. But no one knew which way it was going to go. Of course, it went the other way and did absolutely amazing. It absolutely smashed it. And they made an absolute fortune off it. They really did. Um, but it could have gone, it could have well gone the other way and everyone could have been like, oh, it was absolutely shit. It was so yeah. fake. See, some actors who do film, sometimes they get a percentage of how much money the film takes mm. that are you just getting paid for your scene and say it hits millions of views. Do you get a percentage of that also? No. So I get paid per scene unless it's something that I've directed myself. So um, a couple of years back, I um, wrote and directed two feature length films um which obviously i own so those ones they went out into um like uh sex shops all around europe they went all the way around um so they're they're still for sale to this day and i still get paid on the sales of them um but those were ones that i actually directed and did myself and wrote myself and got released to myself so that's the only reason i still get a paycheck from those ones any other ones it is just literally you get paid per scene um so see like Pornhub and that see what's your most views what's the biggest scenes that people um, love to watch i think i had a look last year and i think my total views of like my porn hub um not just like for one scene for like my scenes on there well, something ridiculous like 61 million or something like that. It's a lot of tissues, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, something like that. that. That was just pulled up. Like that didn't include the others. So it was it was a lot. So yeah. Because I know I had, a, I had a porn star on, she was saying some people's first scenes, they keep them back because they'll be worth fortunes after yeah, they, they become do. famous. Yeah, they release them later. Yeah. Have you got a lot of stuff in the cupboard, storage? Um, not a lot of my stuff's out there but i mean there there is a lot of scenes so if i go and shoot a scene today mm -hmm. it won't come out tomorrow you probably won't see that scene till six months down the line maybe a year down the line it will come out that far away kind of thing because it goes into edit and then they've got other things that they're releasing and stuff like that so whenever new things get released they are generally old mm -hmm. um but yeah, sometimes they hold certain ones back, um, but I don't think there's any, not that I know of, unless one appears on Pornhub tomorrow. <laughs> but unless that, no, I don't know. I don't What's think so. What's the, the most men you've been with one day? Um, I don't really do the crazy stuff. So you know, it's going to sound really boring now. I literally am like the most boring porn star you'll ever meet. <laughs> I don't do anal, I don't do DP, I don't do this. Um. So probably the, the biggest scene I ever did was an orgy scene where there was 10 of us in that scene. And that was in America. Um, and that's it. That's the most. Tired after it? Um, 
God, I was like 22 at the time. I had loads of energy. <laughs> <laughs> like nowadays. <laughs> Do you know how men take Viagra? They get injections. I've had men on and I have to get injections. Like, mm -hmm. Is there anything for women to take? Mm -mm. Not that I know of. Um, we just use spit. What happens if you're on your periods or that? So there's a trick to that. Um, because actually, the first time when I first got in the industry, obviously I didn't know. Um, like I didn't know obviously about stuff like that so I was actually booked into a scene and I came on my period and I kind of was like I rang them up and I said oh I can't come in like I've come on my period and then they put like it was one of the women um, and she came on the phone she went oh no she went you can still do the scene I was like how because you can't have blood in porn it's illegal um, <laughs> for many reasons because it represents violence um, so basically they they were like oh you can still do the scene I was like how Um and then they said, oh, you sponge it. So basically what that means is there, you, like, you buy a sponge, like a natural sponge, cut it in half, put that up, and then you can still do the scene. It's getting it out after, which is a difficult part. I ended up in A&E once for that reason. It's a very funny story. <laughs> so basically um, I did this scene. It was um, a boy-boy-girl scene, so two guys and me sponged it because obviously I was on that week um and afterwards couldn't find the sponge could not find it and don't get me wrong people were great on set like I mean I'm not going to say this for every guy in the industry because I don't want to make them all put them all in a position they don't want to be in but from what I've come across um is if you get it stuck and you can't find it most of the studs after they've done the scene will help you find it they will get up there and get it out if you need to um so I had the stud and he was trying to get it out he couldn't get it out everyone's up there you know like hands are up like we're trying to get this sponge out it's not coming out there for ages no one could find it I was like oh my god like I'm gonna have to go to A&E I'm actually gonna have to go to A&E so embarrassing because they make you know like if you go to A&E they make you go up to the reception desk first and they go oh, hello, what's the problem? You know, and they kind of make you say it in front of the whole waiting room. And I was, there, I was like, oh, well, um, I kind of got this sponge stuck at me. And she was like, I'm sorry, what? I can't hear you. And I'm like, oh my God, so impressed. I said, I've got a sponge stuck at me. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I went, basically, I do porn and I put a sponge up there and it's gone missing. We can't get it out. She was like, okay, just go and sit down. Anyway, I had three nurses, right? I was literally in this in this bloody hospital walled thing. Three nurses, legs right back. They're all up there trying to fish this bloody sponge out. No one could find it. Nobody could find it, right? It even turned out, one of the nurses said to me, she went, are you sure it didn't fall out because we can't find it? I went, no, it hasn't bloody fallen out. Like, I, I would have known. I would have known. It's still there somewhere. I mean, how far can it go? Let's be realistic. Like... If you look at a woman's body, there's only so many places it can go. It's not going to be up here, you know, like it could only be a certain height. Um, eventually, and eventually, the even more embarrassing thing was I had had a boyfriend at the time who had only been with for two weeks and he's sitting there in the hospital with me and my legs back, like watching these nurses fish it out. And I'm going, it's just a normal day, <laughs> just a normal day at work for me. And they were asking him to help. <laughs> the poor guy <laughs> put it this way he didn't date me again after that <laughs> mm -hmm. poor bastard traumatised yeah, traumatised him I think whereas you know my husband now he'd be made to sit there and help but um, yeah they found it in the end it had gone really far up but yeah you do have situations like that that happen on set and it is a real thing that happens and people don't realise it no. you know that are certain things that go into it <laughs> see when you're sleeping with these men and obviously some of them are fucking massive down the stairs yeah. like is there an enjoyment with that or do you get kind of tired of that is it is it true that the bigger it is the better or do you find that's no I mean that's just a myth I think I think that came from men you know I think men were the ones who always said like oh, the bigger it is, the better it is for her. I think that's because men like to boost their ego. Every, like Men are obsessed with how big their dicks are. I've never understood that. Literally do not understand it. Um, size doesn't matter. And everyone watching this is going to love me saying that. But size generally doesn't matter. I think it's about how you use it and the angles you use it. And as long as you've got length to do stuff with, you haven't got a problem. Um, I mean, like the really big guys, there is guys in the industry which are like, 
God, some of them are like 11 inches. And people go, how do you take that? Like, that must really hurt. But do you know what? It's a real dick. So it has, even though it's hard, it has flexibility in it and it's soft. You know, like it's not soft, soft, but it it's flesh, you know. So it, it bends a little bit. It has a bit of movement. Whereas a dildo, which is 11 inches, is rock solid like that. That bloody hurts, like, because that is like, you know, like that. That really hurts. But a guy's dick, which is that big, because it does have that movement in it and stuff like that, it doesn't actually hurt. And the thing is, most of the guys on set, they know how to have sex, if that makes sense. Like, they know they're big. So they're not like a rabbit hammering away, you know? They're not. It's all about angles. And even on set, like, to be fair, most of the time, the, the full length doesn't even go in because the angles. So if we were to go fully in, so say I had the guy behind me and we were doing a sex scene, for him to put his full length in, the camera wouldn't see anything, which would be no good for a porn set. So we actually go at angles where actually normally he's actually more to the side of you. So he's sort of going in. At, if I'm here, he's sort of going in at an angle here. So only half his dick sort of actually going in because the camera needs to see the dick going in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But if you, if you think about if you have sex in real life, you're directly behind the woman as a guy. You're not to the side. But imagine you were filming that and you're directly behind the woman the camera's not going to see anything. So it's all about angles. So yeah, it's very, it's camera tricks. A lot of it is camera tricks. What's a day, a day like on a porn set? Um, it depends. It can be long or short. <laughs> so it's just an average day. Like, so what do you have to do? Do you get up, showered, or do you get showered on set? Do you get tested? Like, What's an out, just a day or of a porn star? So I would, my day would be, I'd get up, I would do normal stuff, do breakfast, get in the shower, do school run, put my dogs out whatever um and then i would drive to work get to set get in hair and makeup sit there in hair and makeup um having a coffee because i can't work without a coffee um or a red bull have to have one or the other or i do not function um sit there in hair and makeup for like a couple of hours getting that done then we go out onto set we do pictures first so they're like your glam still so that's like glamour pictures you know like sort of like the page free glamour stuff you do all that then you have a break then you do all the acting bits so then if there's a scripted bit you'll get all that acting bit out of the way that will all be filmed once that's done you'll have a lunch break then after lunch you go back on set you do all the sex stills which is the photographs of the scene so basically when you see photos of a porn scene it hasn't been taken during the scene. We've done, we've posed all the photos before the actual scene. So we do all them. And then straight after that, we'll do the sex scene. And then the cum shot. And then I will go home, basically, and make dinner. <laughs> Clean our hands, I yeah. hope. <laughs> yes. Have a shower. Have a shower first, then drive home. And then cook dinner, clean the house, put the washing on, load the dishwasher. That's about it. Very boring. <laughs> what about your friends and stuff, Brooke? Like, is it people in the porn industry or is it people from all walks of life? Bit of both. So I've got friends, obviously, in the porn industry who I've met in the industry. Um, is that and, easier for your life to have people that kind of understand your life? Um, not really, because my, my best friends are actually people that I've grown up with. I went performing art school with them. Um, been, they've been around my whole, my whole life. And... Um, they get it. They kind of get the industry. I mean, like, I'm so open about it anyway. They know everything. They know every little detail and stuff like that. Um, so, th yeah, my two best friends are actually people I've grown up with. And then I've got, like, other friends, like, from the industry and stuff. But I think as you get older, you have a smaller circle of friends. Anyway, I don't have loads of friends. I have about oh, probably three or four close friends. That'd be it. Maybe not even that amount, you know. Like, just, yeah, keep myself, uh, like, it's, like, I literally am a family girl. That is literally me. I am all like, you know, my best friend's my husband. Like that's as cheesy as it is. He is. He's my best friend. Um, and me and him are a team. We are a team. We work together. We build together. Everything we do is together. Um, I'd like to keep us both on together. Yeah. He's, he's great, honestly. Like, and you know, and we, we provide a whole family life together. That's our, our normal, our normal life. But yeah, like you, you should definitely have him on, like have a chat. He'd be, mm -hmm. he'd be good. Like I say, it's the, 
people give people an understanding of their life. Like you're the first porn star that's come on. It's not been damaged. If I'm yeah. honest, it's not to put anybody down, but it's true. I can only speak facts mm. from what I know from the industry. Like they come from fucked up backgrounds, and they kind of choose that path of kind of stripper escort porn, whatever it is they've done. And it's not that they're bad people, man, because they're great people. Like mm. genuinely, are. Like, there's some of them that if I ever needed them, they would be there. I don't, but do you know what I mean? They're just they always check in as well. Yeah. they still keep in contact. Like, how do you then, like, like you say, there's, there's no cut off date for you. And mm. that life that you think you ever get out, you see you doing it in your forties, fifties. Like. Yeah, I mean, me and my husband, we have a plan. I mean, ideally, I've always said, sort of, when I'm forty, I don't really want to do anything. <laughs> like, we've always sort of said, maybe when we're forty, we might just um, move to Greece, like buy a villa out there and move out there. I'd still keep my house in the UK because I'd like to come home, do like six months here, six months there, um, and that's sort of our plan, really, just to sort of buy a place abroad and maybe sort of do whatever we want like I am about you know working to live rather than live to work I think you get one life bloody live it you know enjoy it and do what you want to do and live it and I am totally on that um so I think yeah our plan is eventually when when you know when I do stop doing this or whatever and when he stops doing it because obviously he does porn too so when he stops it as well um, then we probably would just, you know, be one of them couples that you see when you go on holiday to Greece in the restaurants every night, you know, drinking a glass of wine, going back to our villa and not really doing a lot. <laughs> that would be us. Semi-retired, basically. Simple life. Yeah. See, because people know you're a porn star, like, I know some porn stars, because people think they're porn stars, are, they're sluts and they're mm-hmm. it's genuinely not. They only sleep on set and they'll do fuck all yeah. like you say. Simple life. Like, there's if anybody ever tried to put it on you because of your background of being a porn star and thinking you would be an easy target? Yeah, of course. Like, you always get guys that try and chat you up or try and, or, you know, will say this or say that or, you know, you know, think that generally, you know, that I'm going to fuck the neighbour or the plumber. Of course I'm not. You know, I'm a married woman. Like, I have morals. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, you will get that. But the thing that I turn around, it always works. I don't even need to say anything else. Just go married sorry and then they're like oh shit didn't realize didn't realize like yeah and you want to see my husband <laughs> <laughs> but so you've been in the industry a long time like the family approved you come from a good background but like, where do you go from here then like do you just keep working and just obviously you've got to tell your your kid at some point as mm-hmm. well that like, where do you go from forward for the future you've done all the, the big st- scenes you've done all the big industries like what's left for you to do um see that's the thing but if we say and i always say do you know what like what i'm so like happy with what i've done like i am like generally when i look back at what i've achieved um in my career i can't like you know i've done everything like i, I generally have like absolutely everything that i wanted to do everything i wanted to achieve i have done it like um you, you know i've just got other goals now that i'm setting but I'm very goal orientated. I like to always have a goal and go for it kind of thing. And I think you have to be like that in life because I think you always need something to focus you. Um, otherwise you can get distracted. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I generally just think I will just carry on doing what I'm doing. I'll carry on. Obviously I'm contracted now. So I'll carry on shooting my scenes for them. Um, just carry on doing exactly what I'm doing. Um, I want to get like um, a couple of houses I want to rent out. So eventually me and my husband spoke about maybe doing that so i might go into that but yeah i'm just quite happy i'm just sort of sailing by doing my thing i haven't really got any more major goals from it like whereas my original goals was like go to america and you know get a name for myself and stuff like this i've kind of done that so now it's just about maintaining it i need to just maintain my image and i don't mean like my physical image i mean my brand my technically Brooklyn Blue is a brand it's a business um I need to maintain that and keep it going until the time I want to turn around and go no right, I'm done kind of thing it's just about maintaining it I think now you worried about it no 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 I used to worry about getting old but now do you know what I'm not that bothered I just think no I mean I don't even go to the gym yet so 
I, I thought when I hit my 30s, I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to have to start going to the gym now because my metabolism slows down. It's all going to go wrong. Haven't started that yet. Oh. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to go. I haven't done it yet. How does the contracts work? You contracted to do five films, 10 films. Let's, how, how does it work? Are you contracted yearly? Yes. So yearly, and they have to renew the contracts each year. Um, so I'm contracted to do a certain amount of films this year. Uh, so basically then I have to do those films like I can't get out of doing them obviously that they're on my own levels and stuff they wouldn't tell me I've got to do this or got to do that they sort of still ring you and say this is what you're doing Um, but yes I'm contracted to do about five movies this year with that company Um, and then any other companies I'm very picky now like about who I work with there's certain companies I worked with in the past that I would never work with ever again certain companies I've fallen out with why? Well, there was one company back in the day oh, and the guy who ran it was a dick. So, um, yeah, never worked for him again, ever. And um, basically it was when I first started in the industry, actually, and he was one of the first companies that I started shooting for. It was um, a company called Kilogram and started shooting for him. Not any problems with shooting for him or anything. But then I decided I was going to go and do my own production like my own production team kind of thing and that's when I wanted to like release my own like I said the feature length films and stuff and um I kind of told him about it this that and the other and he just got really funny about it really sort of jealous about it and started saying he didn't say anything nasty or anything but I could tell what he was trying to do and he sort of said oh well you know, you've got to be careful in this industry because you know what people will say or, you know, what what some people will try and break you down in this industry and will try and, you know, make your DVD so they don't sell and all this kind of thing. Like basically trying to warn me of fake stuff, basically, to sort of put me off releasing my own stuff, obviously because he didn't want me to go and make more money myself. Um, and I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. I don't care. I can see through what you're doing. And he said all this... And then that night, um, something was written on a forum about me. Like, there's, like, industry forums, right? And I thought, oh, that's funny, isn't it? Right. Mm. He decided to write something really bad, which, have ended, which would have ended my career. Could have ended my career. And basically, I'd seen it. One of my friends at the time, Kai Taylor, um, who was a very good friend of mine. God bless him. Um, but he contacted me and he said, have you seen this on the forum? I said, no. He said, what? He sent me the screenshot and I went, all oh, right. Well, that's funny because Thingy from Kilogram was telling me about this earlier today when I told him that I was going into production, right? Telling me, oh, be careful what people will say to put off, like to stop people selling it and stuff like this. So I've gone, I know who's done that. So I messaged him. Right. Where some people wouldn't look into it. Well, I do. You don't fuck with me. You know, I'm not, I'm not having that. Um, so I messaged him and I said, oh, why are you putting this on this forum? He said, oh, I haven't seen anything on a forum. Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, don't be fucking stupid. I know what you've done. Remove it or I will absolutely destroy your company. And I will. Like, I could do anything to destroy your company. Do not do that to me. If you're trying to break me down, I will do it 10 times harder. Um, it got removed <laughs> and I was like, and he still says to this day, he never wrote it on that forum, but don't know who removed it then. Uh, is there a lot of sleaziness behind the scenes as well? Well, a lot of top producers. Um, he's the only one. He's the only one I've ever come across. And that was a full time ban. Never work for you ever again. That's it for me. Mm-hmm. Cutthroat. No, never work for you again. And you just get tested before every shoot? Yes. So we have to go and get certs where basically we go and get a full STI test and then we can't shoot without that certificate. If you turn up without a cert to set, you wouldn't be able to go on set, basically. Who's um, the biggest porn stars on this planet? <sighs> My idol would be Jenna Jameson. I loved her. Um, yeah, absolutely loved her. Probably, I think she's probably done the biggest name. And when I first went into the industry, she was the one that I always said, I always wanted to sort of be the UK version of her. I wanted to make a name for myself as big as she did kind of thing. Um, Probably her, um, Lisa Ann, obviously. It's more the American people, I think. But then there's a few like in the UK, which are, are, you know, are big names. But I think, honestly, truthfully... 
I think my generation of porn stars, so like me and other people that got into the industry on the same time I did, we're like the last sort of big names you'll ever get from UK porn, I think. Because after that, it kind of started filtering out into like OnlyFans and anyone can now put videos online and become a porn, well, become a porn star, as they say. You know, there's so much of that now. When I first started, that didn't exist. Like you were a porn star because you were on set shooting for big companies constantly. You were, you were filming four or five times a week in studios. You were going to all over the world. I, I've shot all over Europe. I've shot all over the world. That was your that was your career. That was your job. That was that was porn. That was a porn star. That was what porn the porn industry was. Um, now it's not like that because now everyone's just on OnlyFans and putting stuff on many vids and this that, and the other. And I generally think I don't think there's any sort of names now that have come out for it, sort of as big as sort of my last generation. If that mm. does that make sense? Yeah. Like I think if you think of UK porn scene, the names you would bring up would be sort of maybe me and then like other girls that started when I did. Mm -hmm. Anyone that kind of started after that, you don't really, they're not them big names, you know? And I think that's because it's been filtered down by not working for companies anymore, by just releasing your own content, yeah. basically. People make more money as well, aren't they? Yeah, I'm, the fucking woman next door could be doing OnlyFans and yeah. <laughs> 10 grand a month. Like, it's mad, that we, but sex sells. It doesn't matter what it people does. say. It's yeah. the biggest seller on the planet. Mm -hmm. What makes a good porn star? Um, enjoying what you do, of course. Um, I think be it, you know, I think being a good actress as well and a good actor. I mean, if you look at a few of the people that I know in the industry, like on, on like sort of my side, the good side of it, a fair few of them have come from like... Um, backgrounds where they did acting and stuff like, or they weren't performing arts and stuff like that uh i think that enjoying it really playing the part getting into character playing the part and making the viewer watch it and enjoy watching it because he knows you're enjoying it does that make sense what well, if you if you've got a fancy the person does it not matter because it's acting um women it doesn't matter at all i mean men it's a little bit different they've got to have at least something that they can get hard over. So they don't have to like fancy the woman, but a lot of them have certain niches. So like there'll be some guys in the industry that can only work with women that have got, you know, big boobs because that's their focus. You know, there's other guys that they can only work with women that have got big asses. But, so a lot of the guys in the industry have a focus like that. It doesn't actually mean, you know, they're not actually fancy in them but they've got something that they can look at which can get them to that level they need whereas um women no not at all just bit of spit <laughs> <laughs> have you been asked have you ever been asked to do weird shit uh yes <laughs> i've had weird requests from like from like fans and stuff like the stuff they say is bizarre some of it the weirdest one i ever had was um a guy messaged me and he said, oh, like, hi, Brooklyn, like, I'm a really big fan. Um, I'd love to be able to meet you. And would you stand on my balls and crush them? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And he was like, yeah, in heels. I want you to wear your biggest heels, stand on my balls and put all your body weight on them. And he generally was serious. Like, he was 100% serious. And I just thought, what the hell? Like, how can anyone be turned on by that? Please explain to me. That sounds like you're going to end up in emergency surgery. <laughs> like That does not sound fun at all. And I generally, I mean, I get people like, you know, have fetishes and stuff. And I get some people maybe are into a little bit of pain or whatever. But that, come on. I, bizarre. Bizarre. What's your biggest turn on? Um... Oh, so I'm, I'm going to sound so boring. Uh, I like a bit of bondage, to be fair. I like a bit of bondage. But do you know what? I'm a proper romantic. I really am. And my favourite sex, generally, is making love. Like, just that cuddly, kissing, hugging, that romantic sex, like what you see in the movies. That's my favourite sex. What's your biggest turn off? Um smell <laughs> i've come across a few <laughs> you ever get that and it 
porn scenes with like smelly dicks? Like, are there a, there uh, a... Yeah, there's been a few occasions where, like, obviously, like, you have things on set happen where certain things are not clean enough or, you know, a girl needs to freshen up because something's not quite right and stuff like that. But to be fair, in the industry, um, we're all really nice, like most of us. I don't speak for everyone, but most of us. And if you ever were on set with um, somebody that had that issue, it, the other person that you're working with or you, um, whoever, I, if I say I was on set with someone and they had an issue like that, you would just tell them nicely. You would just say, oh, look, babe, you know, this is a situation like you just need to go sort it out like don't worry about it it's not a thing you know and and, and generally the, a lot of people initially we really do care about each other we really do care about each other's like safety and health and stuff and um we would generally just pull them aside and say that you wouldn't embarrass them not at all um you would just generally be nice about it what's your dream your dream kind of set your your dream kind of job with whom or where or what like what's your dream for the porn industry what's that one dream that you you would have to do um or have you kind of just kind of completed it all i always wanted to work for the biggest companies in the world and i always wanted to travel the world um filming like doing porn and i, I did do that um the one thing i would probably love to have said that i've achieved is more awards <laughs> and also just maybe like maybe becoming a household name for it and also being known for trying to put a positive light on my industry because I really I do generally love the porn industry and I really generally love everyone in it and it re it really infuriates me when they do always show bad sides to it and I I do really hope that by the time I'm done with porn and that that I've helped change people's minds on the stigma of it basically and and hopefully people will see that we're not all what they think we are and there is actually some really genuinely nice people in it that are just hard working you know wives and parents who you know generally really care about their family and are doing whatever's best for their family see fake taxi and stuff like see if you go to a, a field or whatever they go like mm. you got to get planning permission or like, how does it work or do you just find an area that's quiet yeah, so when they first started, they got in trouble because they were using um, a public car park on the top floor. And then it was actually someone from the council found out, right? But they found out and they said because when they saw one of the movies, they noticed it was like, it was in Sutton it was filmed. They noticed it was the Sutton skyline. And everyone was kind of like, well, how would you notice that if you weren't watching it? So obviously he was watching it and then decided to, he obviously worked for the council and then had to admit to the council this was going on. So they banned it. Um, and they actually stopped all taxis going into that car park for a long time. Um, and then they moved to a field which was privately owned um, where they had permission from the owner and they'd pay the owner like a, a certain amount to use that field that day. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like with all locations really, they're normally rented out. Um, so they'll pay the owner to rent the house for the day or or if it's the big studios, obviously studios are owned anyway. Yeah, what would happen if you get caught and you never had permission? Um, I don't think I don't I to be honest, I don't think they really do much. I think if you generally got caught and the police came out, I think they'd kind of just say, Oh, come on, move along. You know, no one wants to see this, off you go. Um, not that I've ever been in that situation, so I don't know. But um yeah, I generally think they'd be like that, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I don't think unless you were really, really sort of like in public doing it really badly of course you'd probably be arrested <laughs> so going forward for the future be like what's your plans what's your dreams what's your ambitions uh carry on doing what i'm doing um and basically yeah probably buy a villa abroad and sort of live sort of half greece half england and just like chill just chill that's that's it yeah like and stay married to my husband hopefully <laughs> how do you deal with the mentals health side of things like I say you're quite level-headed you don't seem as if 
anything really affects you but do you ever get affected by it you have your low days or anything i have days where i have to motivate myself that's what i struggle with motivation i can get lazy like i can and and i'm like you know some days i'll wake up i'll go oh, and i'll be booked in for a shoot and i'll go oh i can't bother to go in today oh i'm not gonna go in and i won't which is really bad. But it's, do you know what it is? It's because I've got the choice in my industry. I can just not turn up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, not not turn up. I'd have to sort of tell them. But that is the bad thing about it. Um, however, you can't do that too much. Obviously, you'd have a really bad rep. But that is the downside to it. But I do have to motivate myself to sort of... That's why I said I like to set goals. I have to have goals. And I do really stress myself over goals to the point that it annoys me actually I annoy myself because I do know that I do it so my side of it would be more the fact of I set myself a goal and if I'm not hitting it but sometimes it's a fucking crazy goal you know but if I'm not hitting it I'll really stress myself out over not hitting that and then I'll be like I need to do this I need to do more I need to do that whatever and I'll really stress out that not hitting it and then I kind of got to the point where I'm like I need to just stop doing that and just take a step back mm. and just be grateful for what I've got yeah. and just chill the fuck out because I do do that a lot and um and then it's just motivating myself really to get out of bed are you doing only fans <laughs> as well yes so what's is, what's the difference obviously Paul and only fans you're mm-hmm. in control but is it just the kind of same daily routine just to get your content and just yeah it, yeah. it is and is it more anything, hands-on though with people messaging yeah, it's full time. So like the amount of messages I'm messaging all like all day, every day, there's so many. Like it is a full time job. It's difficult to fit it in. Um it's more difficult when you go on holiday. So like we went to Lapland at Christmas and um obviously I was on a family holiday, so I didn't want to work. Like I didn't want to be on my only fans because I'm you know, I was on husky slaves and stuff, <laughs> enjoying myself. So I kind of didn't log on for a couple of days. But the problem is when you do that as a job is them couple of days of not logging on you've lost a load of income because you haven't been active so then it's like you have to play catch up but then you know some people say well why would you not get someone else just to log on on them days but then why would I do that because that's not me I'm not going to have someone else talk to my you know talk to my fans pretending to be me that doesn't make sense so that's the only thing with it like you can't ever get a day off like I can never have a day off Mm -hmm. never never ever ever have a day off and then trying to sort of schedule content in I have to sort of book a day in the week where I go right I'm gonna do content on this day and then I'll get up that day and go oh, I'm not doing it today and I'm like no motivate myself I've got one of them Alexas now and I tell it to motivate me <laughs> I'm like Alexa motivate me <laughs> and it gives me really rubbish motivation quotes which make no sense to what I'm asking it to do <laughs> what sort of content is on your OnlyFans is it kind of porn side of things or is it just photos of yourself that like- uh, porn so all porn and um, I, I mix it up so I do a lot of like really sort of like um, professional shoots but then I do a lot of real raw footage so just like you know real real videos that me and my husband have just taken together like that real sort of amateur stuff or things like that so I, I mix it up basically I like to keep it as real as possible um, and I'll answer people backly as real as possible on there as well. Like, you know, if someone messages me going, oh, what are you up to? You know, some girls would say, oh, you know, I'm just in the car stuck in traffic. So I've got my dildo out. I wouldn't say that because it's not true. I would say, oh, I'm in the car in traffic and I'm really fucking bored. Like, I'm just very real on it. But I think that's what people like. And I think that's why... I have like the fans that I do because I'm just very real rather than fake, you know? I mean, I look fake, but I'm a real person sort of thing. Like I'm not a fake personality. What's all your social medias and stuff for people who maybe want to follow you, maybe get involved, talk to you, find out about the industry? Because like you say, so you're promoting a positive lately. What's all yeah. your social media links? Uh, so Twitter, mm. Instagram. But Instagram I don't use as much because uh, they seem to ban everyone. <laughs> <laughs> who does glamour modelling or porn. Um, so mainly Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, um, and that's it. I'm not on TikTok because I should be. I actually signed up, but I hate it. I really hate TikTok. Bye. Oh, I just, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. And it's like, I just, 
I've never got into it and everyone's like you need to be on TikTok like you need to be on it like it's so good to like promote you know get traffic to you mm. and everything like this but I'm like I just hate TikTok <laughs> mm. there's a lot of traffic towards it man yeah I used to think it was for kids but now it's just for adults and yeah it's just good for myself with clips from podcasts the boom man and it's yeah. good for getting traffic but I don't do that anymore I've got somebody else to do that but it's a it is a good marketing tool man yeah maybe I should get on it I just yeah. don't like doing the I never know. Like I've scrolled through and gone, I don't know what video to do. Like, I don't know what's trending on there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but would you like to finish up on anything, Brooke? Um, no, just that's it. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Yeah, <laughs> uh, do you know what, man? You're a decent person. You've Thank got a good you. spirit, man. Good energy. I genuinely wish you all the best for the future. And Thank you. Chase all your dreams and, and keep going for it. Basically. And you'll have to have me and my husband on here together. Yeah, I look forward to it. God bless you, Brooke. Thank Take you. Care.